Hey, hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. This is Brother D with DevotedToYah.com. Uh, it's our free conference called Fellowship Study. And we are in the book of Yahusha, son of Nun. Hallelujah. And starting us off is Brother David. So, Brother David, if you could read, let's see, verses 1 to 9. Hallelujah. The book of Joshua or Yahushua 1, verse 1 to 9. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of Yah, it came to pass that Yah spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be, not, neither be thou dismayed, for Yah your Elohim is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Well, I, well, well the, the main thing, you know, it, 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 it really takes right on into the book of Yahushua because we see the same message, obey Yah. You know, obey Yah, you're about to go into this land, obey Yah. No one will be able to withstand you. Obey Yah and hearken and cleave unto him. You know, be strong, be courageous. And we have Yahushua as the leader, you know, taking him into the land. But it, it, it really is the same message. And we, we, we really just start right out with it, you know. And that's all, that's all I can really add to it. I don't really have much to say. Amen. Thank you, David. Uh, for me, um, for me, uh, I did a video on this in Spanish, but everybody likes to quote uh, Yahusha, Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and brave. Don't be afraid and don't panic, for I, the Lord your God, am with you in all you do. Hallelujah. Go get your blessing. Snap, slap your neighbor, kick your neighbor, tell him I'm going to get my breakthrough and my blessing. You know, and, 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 you know, some churches, they use it, you know, they say it the nice way, you know, don't be afraid because God is with you everywhere that you go. He will never leave you nor forsake you. But they don't want to read verse 1 to 8. They don't want to quote verses 1 to 8. Oh, Yahuwah, have mercy on all of us. But yeah, it's very clear. He wants obedience. Obedience to what? To his law, to his commandments, his statutes, his vow, the vows, the covenant vows, the marriage vows, the terms and conditions. Amen. That's the theme here. And that's why we're reading the Old Testament. We're trying to see. We're trying to see if we can match up all this. Please obey me. Please love me. Please just trust me. Compared to the Christian message of the Law of Moses, has been done away with and nailed to the cross because it's a burden and a yoke and impossible to to do. And you know, so that's why we're doing this study. Milo. Yeah, I love part in this. Um 
when in verse 8 says, The sefer of the Torah shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, um, that you may guard to do according to all that's written therein. And I'm going to get to the second part in a moment, but that reminded me of, of Psalms chapter 1, and it says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah. And in his Torah he meditates day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth his fruit. In his season his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. And it's the, the Torah is what gives us that guidance of, of how to determine the right from wrong. It gives us guidance of, you know, how how to know you know, who to sit with and who not to sit with, you know, not to be among the scornful and those that are against Yahuwah. And, um, and he tells us to meditate on it day and night. And there's a it's like an if-then type of statement here because back in, in Yahusha chapter 1, it says in verse 8, then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you shall have good success. And um, it's just a shift in a mindset now being an Israelite and recognizing the Torah gives blessings. I mean, there's blessings and curses in it. Um, but in the obedience of it and, and in the joy of it and the meditation of it and walking it out like, you know, Messiah did and through his strength um, and through the walk, there's good success in it. <laughs> so it's, it's 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 a very beautiful thing. And, and I love that you, uh, um, if I'm not reading it wrong in verse 9 where it says, have not I commanded you be strong and courageous, that he's that it's a command. Like, be strong. Take, take up courage in my word. Like, take up be strengthened in my word. My word is life. It's bread. It's, you know, dine on it. Feast on it. Be courageous. Don't, you know, fall back into the ways of the world. Fall, follow my word, you know, and, and, and stand on it. So, so, beautiful, beautiful. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Uh, looks like we're getting uh, a message here from Sister Britt. Uh, she has a question here. What do y'all think about those who come against us? who don't keep the commandments. I stand up against injustice, and my enemies are put to shame for coming against me. I read on Deuteronomy, we are to live, we are to live, we are to those who keep covenant. We are to love those who keep covenant. There it is. We are to love those who keep covenant. Should we embrace and love the covenant breakers? I say no. Any commandment, any comments, please share. Um, for me, obviously we are to love uh, everyone, um, but there is scripture that says Yahuwah hates the, wick, the those who practice wickedness. Um, but then it says in John that he loved the world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So uh, there's this there's this love hate relationship. We gotta hate sin. Uh, you know, and and there's some people that we we aren't gonna like. That's that's normal, and the way that we love them is by still telling them the truth. I think that's mercy and grace for somebody as wicked as they are and how much they've harmed you to speak against you for you to still give them words of life. You know, repent. That is that is the key to you having eternal life. I can easily tell somebody, screw you, you know, I don't want to talk to you. You know, like, then you don't even give them anything. And that's hate. You know, but at the same time, we can't throw pearls before swine. So this is like, ah, you know, it's not an easy answer. You know, I don't think it's an easy answer, but I, I think um, we are to love people enough to, to try our best to try to, you know, tell them the truth, lead them to the truth. Um, we got to forgive our enemies. And I want to do a video on this topic, by the way. Forgiving our enemies, forgiveness. It all has to be in proper context with repentance. There is no forgiveness without repentance. And I think that's the missing link when people like to talk about forgiveness. You can't, somebody can't be forgiven if they haven't repented. You know, and people want us to forgive people who haven't repented. How, does, how, is that, how is that true forgiveness? How is that true reconciliation? But anyways, 
uh, Brother David. Wait, yeah. Wait. Or, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit on the opposite end because I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be very blunt. There are people that I hate. I hate wicked people. Um, more so those that, my biggest issue is those that, that say that they stand on the word um, but are rebellious. And we've already seen this in our, in our, in our lives, myself and my husband. And um, this is how I think of it. And I think, I think you hit it where it's, I think it's on a case-by-case case almost basis. Um, because quite frankly, when I see in the scriptures in the Torah where if we were in our land, if we were amongst our judges, if we were under a righteous ruling, um, if people came up and were worshiping other mighty ones, they'd be stoned. If people were sons and children were rebellious, um, maybe adult children, they were drunkards, they were to be stoned. So the way I do that now today is since I'm in exile is I will cut people off if you're rebellious. Now, it's different. Shaul mentions it, and he says, you know, don't sit with the drunkards and the fornicators and the idolaters and all that stuff. And he says, I'm not talking about the people of the world. You, then you couldn't even live here. So I'm not talking about that. What I, what I think Brit is getting to, um, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm understanding her correct, is those, the, the, the ones that hate the word, um, but it's those before. I get the word is going to hate the word. That, that's just a given. I'm talking about those who say um, the scriptures are true and they hate the Torah. I'm talking about those who say they love the Messiah and hate the Torah um, and hate his words and hate the commands of the Most High and hate the very bread that he's given us. Um, so, yeah, I hate, I hate some people. It may sound harsh. Maybe I need to be on it. Um, but if you're rebellious and you're wicked, I'm going to cut you off because I don't want to stand, just like Psalms 1 said, amongst the, the scornful and amongst the scoffers. And it's difficult to do, um, but at the same time, some people are dead to me, literally dead to me. Um, and then there's others where you have that mercy. So that's just, I know it sounds strong and harsh, but that's kind of, I'm just, I'm yep. just bringing no, like out I said, others. Like I said, it's, 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 it's one of those things that each individual person has to embrace all of these topics that Yahuwah talks about, the hate, the anger, the forgiveness, the mercy, all of this, each individual has to work that out on their own. Like you can't give a one answer for every situation. It's all it's all dependent on what you who is leading a person to do, honestly. Um, so yeah, I agree with you, Millie. Um, I'm with you. David, Millie, if you could read... Um, the next passage is we have verse 10 to 18. So the rest, if you could read the rest of uh, Yahusha chapter 1. Okay. And David, if you come back in, you, you might have muted yourself. Um, and 10 says, Then Yahusha commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this garden to go and to possess the land which Yahuwah Elohim gives you to possess it. And to the, this is, this is Reuvenim, so the Reubenites, and to the Gadim, and to the half tribe of Manasseh, spoke Yahusha, saying, Remember the word which Moshe, the servant of Yahuwah, commanded you, saying, Yahuwah Elohechem has given you rest and has given you this land. Your women, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moshe gave you on this side of the yard. And, but ye shall pass before that your brethren armed all the mighty men of valor and help them until Yahuwah have given your brethren rest as he's given you, and they also have possessed the land which Yahuwah Elohechem gives them. Then you shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moshe, Yahuwah's servant, gave you on this side, yard and toward the sun rising. And they answered Yahushua, saying, All that you command us we will do, and whithersoever you send us, we will go. Whithersoever you send us, we will go, according as we hearkened unto Moshe in all things, so we will hearken unto you. Only Yahuwah Elohecha be with you, as he was with Moshe. Whoever that rebelled against your commandment and will not hearken unto your word and all that you command him, he shall be put to death. 
only be strong and be of good courage. Wonderful. So, uh, what I gathered, this is basically just um, repeating, especially with the, this is the half-tribe of Manashe and then Reuben and, and the God tribe, where they wanted to stay on the other side of the yard, and, and they were able to do so with, one condition, the, the the mighty men would go over and fight with their brethren and give them the land, um, the the land of promise that was aforementioned to Abraham and to Yisak and so on. And um, <laughs> there was something that jumped out of me. <clears throat> I mean, that was basically basically it. Um, but even eighteen talks about rebels. <laughs> I look. My forefathers, they're so funny. Um, mentioned, you know, if people rebel, then, then they shall not live. And, and we obviously see that there's a lot of rebellion and not keeping to that word throughout time. But I, I love the passion in it, you know, and, and saying, you know, let, may Yahuwah be with you as, as he was with Moshe. That's powerful. And, and, I, and that's very encouraging to see Israelites speaking to brethren in that way. Um, and there's this act of submission, too. There's leadership here. So good stuff all around. Awesome. You mentioned Manashe, mm -hmm. uh, half tribe of Manashe in this chapter. Mm -hmm. Did it address that? Yeah, in, in uh, twelve, uh, Joshua yeah. told Reubenites, Gad Gadites, and the half tribe of Manashe. There it is. All right. Yeah, it comes from Numbers thirty-two. Is the reference that I wrote here? So hopefully that's the right reference. Cool. Yeah, you shared you shared pretty much the good points there for this this uh, portion here. Um. Yeah, I think we can move on. That verse 18 is serious. I mean, shh, come on, man. It's not to take lightly. Um, any man who rebels against what you say and does not obey all your commands will be executed. Wow. It's pretty strong. And that wasn't even a this as you. That was like the Israelites taking on that passion themselves. That like, yeah. themselves. Yeah. All right. All right, we could chop into um, chapter 2. There's no breakages here in chapter 2. It's pretty much a straight shot. So whoever reads next, feel free to stop if you want to, if you feel, you know, you should stop and, and embrace what, what you just read. So... Leanne has something. Leanne, yep. I always felt like um, those harsh s s scriptures, you know, like the last one there, uh, and and that would like the when the kids would get um, stoning people, you know, I always felt like it, it was so severe because it was such a a bad thing that if they let it if they let it slide, then it would just it would become like it is here today in our country. <laughs> This is what basically why I felt that he was always so strong in all of his, uh, you know. I mean, cause he, like you said, that that 18, that's very cut and dry. There's no nothing else to talk about. And the reason that it, it doesn't say executed in the Besor, it says who rebels against your command and does not obey your word in all that you command him is put to death. And then it says only be strong and courageous. I think that, um, like, when you let this, the little foxes spoil the vine, when you let the little things in, you know, he had to be strict. And, and I want to say, too, to go back to the very beginning of this, uh, chapter 1, it's the pattern, it's the example. That's what I'm trying to say. He keeps that pattern example the same, you know. Do good, you're going to have a good life. You do bad, you're going to have a bad life. <laughs> Thanks. That's all I wanted to share. Just that simple. Just that Hallelujah. Simple. Hallelujah. Not that <laughs> yep. complicated. Not that complicated. Yep. Scriptures, Scriptures 101. 101. Please Thank obey you. and you'll be blessed. Be blessed. Disobey, disobey and you'll be cursed. Be cursed. I mean, that's yeah. Just it's like you're going to be a fool to not follow the instructions. It's so complicated. <laughs> you know, it's complicated, you know, it's complicated when we make when it complicated. When we want to sin. Yeah. When we want to sin. <laughs> right. We're trying to find a wiggle <laughs> room. We're trying to find a yeah. little crack. You know, and like, isn't it amazing how everybody, including me, you can find some justification 
you know, you can work around, oh, it was this, it was that. No, it was wrong. It was sin. No doubt. No I, doubt. Can I can relate. Trust me. You know? <laughs> I can relate with that. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm my talking years about in Christianity. Years Christianity. I'm, not I'm not even talking, talking about when I crossed over and came to Israelite, Israelite, honestly. I think my years in Christianity, uh, being a girlfriend, uh, boyfriend-girlfriend relationship with my, uh, my <laughs> now wife, man, that whole boyfriend and girlfriend thing is out of control. It is. You know, I'm over here justifying myself. Oh, we can hug each other. Oh, I could get real close. Oh, we can. We didn't do that. You know, we don't get married. Right. It's horrible. It's, it's horrible. And, and that's what I was saying. It just a little bit just sucks you in. A little bit, you could take a little more, a little more, a little more. And then you're full-blown on fire with sin. We ain't even married, okay? And we're walking into church with holding hands. And everyone's like, and nobody oh, said nothing. So oh, encouraging it. I'm talking about yeah. leaders. We love yep. you guys. You guys are so cute. Like, y'all supposed, like, to, be y'all like, y'all supposed to be like, yo, what y'all doing holding hands? Mm-hmm. You know? You know? Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, and that's why... I'm why so I, glad you're still together. The they have. Anyways, Anyways, we're getting down to all tangent. Also a tangent. Um, um, Milo's up next. Milo's up next. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, love you. Thank you. Love you guys. All right. Hallelujah. Um, chapter 2 is a straight shot. Uh, let's see. If anyone wants to read, press star six one or press the question mark button. I'm going to let it go free for all. Whoever wants to read, jump on in. Yahusha chapter two. The whole chapter. All yours. Star six one. There we go. All right. I think Kai is in. Kai, is that you? Shalom. Yeah. All right, Shalom. So go ahead, take it away, Chapter 2. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, who show you that? And if you could, your, your volume is pretty low. If you could, uh, oh. I don't know if you're far away from your phone or if you're on speakerphone. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. It's better. Okay. You said Yahusha chapter 2, right? Right? Joshua chapter 2. Yep. All right, hold on. Let me find it. I was here a while ago. I can find it again. Um... Okay, I found it. Joshua chapter 2, the whole chapter, right? Yep, the whole chapter. You can stop whenever you want if you want to, you know, kind of just embrace what you just read and want us to discuss it. You can stop, but yeah, the whole chapter. Okay, it says, And Yahushua, son of Nun, secretly sent out two men from Shittim to spy, saying, go see the land and Yerko. And they went and came to the house of a woman, a whore, and her name was Rahab. And they lay down there. But it was reported to the sovereign of Yerko, saying, see men from the children of Yashar have come here tonight to search out the land. And the sovereign of Yerko sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. But the woman, the woman had taken the two men and hid them. So she said, The men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. Then it came to be as the gate was being shut. When it was dark, the, the men went out. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly so that you overtake them. But she had brought them out to the roof and hidden them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid out on the roof. And the men pursued them by the way of the yard and 
to the fords, and they shut the gate afterwards as soon as the pursuers had gone out. And before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof. And she said to the men, I know what Yahuwah has given you the land. I know that Yahuwah has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you because of you. For we have heard how Yahuwah dried up the water of the sea of reeds for you when you came out of Mitzrayim and what you did to the two sovereigns of the Amorites who were beyond the yard in Sihon and Og, whom you put under the ban. And when we heard, our hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in anyone because of you, for Yahuwah, your Elohim, he is Elohim in the Shemaim above and on the earth beneath. And now please swear to me by Yahuwah, since I have shown you kindness, that you also show kindness to my father's house and shall give me a true token and shall spare my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all that they have and shall deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, our lives for your for yours. If you do not expose this matter of ours, then it shall be when Yahuwah has given us the land that we shall treat you in kindness and truth. So she let them down by a rope through the window for her house was on a city wall and she dwelt on the wall. And she said to them, go to the mountain, let the pursuers come upon you and you shall hide there are three days until the pursuers have returned, and afterwards go on your way. And the men said to her, We are released from this oath of yours, which you have made us swear, unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us dr- down. And until, and unless you bring your father and your mother and your brothers and all your father's household to your own home. And it shall be that anyone who goes outside the doors of your house into the street, his blood is on his own head and we are innocent. And anyone who is with you in the house, his blood is on our head if a hand is laid on him. And if you expose this matter of ours, Then we shall be released from your oath, which you made us swear. And she said, let it be according to the words. And she sent them away, and they went. And she bound the scarlet cord in the window. So they left and came to the mountain and stayed there three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers sought them in all the way, but did not find them. Then the two men returned and came down from the mountain and passed over. And they came to Yahushua, son of Nun, and related to him all that had been befallen them. Then they said to Yahushua, Truly Yahuwah has given all the land into our hands, and also all the inhabitants of the land have melted away before us. Yeah. All right. Kaya, don't know if you have any questions from this chapter or any comments. And anybody else, if anybody has any questions or comments, press star six one. Um, I don't really have anything. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Yahuwah shows mercy, right? Shows mm-hmm. mercy to a woman for defending the Israelites to allow them to spy out the land. Awesome. All right, we got David and Miracles up next. Thanks, Kaya, for reading. Appreciate you. Thank you. I wanted to cross-reference this with the New Testament or the so-called or the Renewed Covenant, excuse me. And it is from the book of James or Yaakov, chapter 2. It says, but do you wish to know, O foolish man, this is verse 20, that the belief without the works is dead? Was not Abraham our father declared right by works 
when he offered Etoch, his son, on the altar? Do you see that the belief was working with his works, and by the works the belief was perfected? And the scripture was filled, which says, Abraham believed Elohim, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness, and he was called Elohim's friend. You see, then, that a man is declared right by works and not by belief alone. In the same way, was not Rahab the whore also declared right by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so also the belief is dead without the works. Woo, hallelujah for the word. Thank you, brother. Yes. Hallelujah, for real on that one. And yeah. the, um, the, the, the thing is, is really, it, it really shows if anybody, anybody can turn and believe, you know, but ultimately, you know, she, she feared. She feared Yah. She believed. She knew. You know, see, here's the thing. When we read the scriptures, we, we understand it just like she heard about it. You know, we know that Yah divided the sea. We know that he killed the Egyptians. You know, she heard about it, too. And, it, and it, she was she feared in her heart, and she protected those Israelite men because she knew she she believed ultimately, you know, mm-hmm. despite whatever condition she was in. But like it says in James, she was righteous because of that, you know. And ultimately, the whole point is Rah- Rahab would have obviously repented because she did have the heart to believe and the faith, and she you know she took that step. But she she would have bec- she became a part of Israel, and also the uh, David came from her. She was a part of David's lineage. Um, I don't know exactly what chapter that's in, but it's in there somewhere, right? It didn't he come from Rahab? Was she, was she not in his lineage somewhere? Let me find that. Yeah, go ahead and find that and uh, come back in. I'm going to piggyback okay. off of what you just shared. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31 gives the uh, a little bit more on faith. By faith. Rahab, the prostitute, escaped the destruction of the disobedient because she welcomed the spies in peace. So you see here that even she did it in faith and works. So she believed that Yahuwah was going to destroy this place. She believed that Yahuwah's hand was upon these men. She believed that the covenant that she made with these men, that they were going to be faithful to their word and come back and rescue her. But in obedience, the action that she took is to give them the instruction and send them to the place where they needed to go to hide out. And that's the action. Faith is belief, and then action is physical. <laughs> it's, that's why it's called action. And then the combination gives you perfect faith, which James actually perfectly illustrates in verse 22 of James 2, you see that his faith was working together with his works, and his faith was perfected by works. So you have faith, works, and then perfect faith. Hallelujah. Uh, Millie, you're up next. Thank you for muting. Mm-hmm. I, know you, I know you love that. Uh, <laughs> that's good when you brought it out. <laughs> um, but man, when, when, when Kai was reading this, and she hit like the be the beginning where it talked about how um Rahab was talking to them and saying, you know, the terror of your mighty one has gone throughout all the land and like all the inhabitants' hearts are faint and this is before T V, this is before media. Like who is so mighty, can you think about just all his works and his miraculous wonders and the things he's done uh, amongst the Mitzrites and, and when he's bringing them out that went throughout the lands where people were fearing him and some of them obviously feared him but didn't turn. They just feared the army that, that he was creating through through the Israelites and stuff. And then you have others that hear about it, like David was saying, and, and was like, Whoa, I need I need to be on the right the right side of the fence and um so that I that's just that's just mighty how his works just went throughout the land and um the hearts were faint because of him and that's what he does because he's so powerful. With that I yield. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. All right. Next chapter. All right. Shabbat Shalom again. This is Brother D. We're in Yahusha chapter 3. Um, and if anybody wants to read, press star 6-1. I'll give you guys about 
seven seconds. Anybody to press star six one? If not, I will read this chapter. And it's going to be the whole chapter again. No stopping. Unless I feel led to stop. Going once. Going twice. And here we go. Yahusha chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Bright and early the next morning, Yahusha and the Israelites left Shittim and came to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing the river. After three days, the leaders went through the camp and commanded the people, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, your Elohim, being carried by the Levitical priests, you must leave here and walk behind it. Powerful. I mean, just imagine that in that picture. But stay about 3,000 feet behind it. <laughs> I don't know what you guys see in measurements on your, on your uh, translation, but I have a, I'm reading from the NET, by the way. I'm switching it up today. A little easier to read. But stay about 3,000 feet behind it. That's pretty far behind. Keep your distance so you can see which way you should go. For you have not traveled this way before. Yahusha told the people, ritually, uh, I'm not going to say that. Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow Yahuwah will perform miraculous deeds among you. So Yahusha told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow Yahuwah will perform miraculous deeds among you. Yahusha told the priests, pick up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they picked up the Ark of the Covenant and went ahead of the people. Yahuwah told Yahusha, this very day I will begin to honor you before all Yisrael, so they will know that I am with you just as I was with Moshe. Instruct the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the bank of the Jordan River, wade into the water. Yahusha told the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of Yahuwah your Elohim. Yahusha continued, This is how you will know the living Elohim is among you, and that he will truly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, Amorites, and the Jebusites. Look, the Ark of the Covenant of the ruler of the whole earth is ready to enter the Jordan ahead of you. Hallelujah! The Ark of the Covenant of the ruler of the whole earth is ready to enter the Jordan ahead of you. Now select for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Yisrael, one per tribe. When the feet of the priest carrying the Ark of Yahuwah, the ruler of the whole earth, touch the water of the Jordan, the water coming downstream toward you will stop flowing and pile up. So when the people left their tents to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the covenant went ahead of them when the ones carrying the ark reached the Jordan and the feet of the priest carrying the ark touched the surface of the water the Jordan I have here in uh, in parentheses I don't know if anybody else has this but it says the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest time so it looks like a little note there verse 16 the water coming downstream toward the stopped flood uh, the water coming downstream toward them stopped flowing. It piled up far upstream at Adam, the city near Z Zarethan. There was no water at all flowing to the sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea. The people crossed the river opposite Jericho. The priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah stood firmly on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan. All Yisrael crossed over on dry ground until the entire nation was on the other side. So another crossing here. And um, I don't have any questions or comments here. Pretty self-explanatory. A lot of quoting Yahusha. Um, speaking to the people. Um, 
Yeah, they're getting ready to take over. And another another splitting of water happened. Ark of the Covenant going before them. It's very powerful. 3,000 feet behind. That's pretty far behind. All right. Millie, you're up. Two things that jumped out was one, when you said in parentheses, mine does have it as well. And I think it's giving the... the um, the emphasis that this this crossing was a bit different. I mean, this river overflowed. Like it was more abundant this in this time of year. Like it wasn't just its natural normal flow. Like during the harvest time, the water was above sea level. We want to say type of thing. Um, the tide was the tide was high, and he still stopped it. So that's beautiful. And then um, in verse seven, just this Yahuwah tells Yahusha that, you know, I'm going to magnify you, Yahusha, so that people will know you are now, like, taking on the reins like Moshe. And um, there's something about leadership, you know, I mean, and, and, and uh, it's, I guess it's interesting or something we can dialogue about is in respect to how do we adhere to leadership, you know, with scriptures that, that talk about, you know, um, the other walk is to be your, your only teacher, and yet there there's a place for shepherds, though. Shepherds of Israel, I don't believe regular Christian pastors, because they ain't teaching truth, um, or just parts of it. But um, but how does the role of leadership play in our lives, or, you know, when we're not supposed to talk against leadership, and, and what does that aspect look like for us as, as Israelites? Is that it? And you're muted, Daddy. Definitely muted. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, leadership is definitely legit. It's real. Um, it's scriptural. Um, I know a lot of us who have been burned by church, uh, burned by Christianity. Sometimes we go on this rampage, and then we start thinking there's no such thing as leadership anymore. Obviously, try to try to run a community with no leadership and see what happens. Um, it's definitely not going to work. Um, so. You know, when it, when when a community gets but so big, you need to establish leadership. Uh, there needs to be people that can be called upon to settle, uh, you know, confrontation, conflicts. Uh, there needs to be people that can make judgment calls. Um, you know, who who stays in a community, who goes, um, who gets rebuked, how harshly they get rebuked, and what to do with a person. I mean, all this stuff is very very important. Uh, if everybody's nilly willy doing their own thing, I mean, it's just gonna be chaos. So Yahuwah established leadership for a reason. There's elders for a reason, and uh, it's not a pyramid scheme. There's no one guy on top. That that was only during Moses' time, but Moses even divvied up, you know, his responsibilities and gave you know positions to to several elders uh, for for I think it said hundreds and thousands or something like that, but. There's always multiple. I believe in a multiple group of leadership, not just one guy being a leader of a community. There should be multiple leaders that are on the same page. That way there's accountability. And, yeah, leadership is essential. Very, very important. Brother Doug, you're up next. <clears throat> oh, I just wanted to uh, add there's a little difference on one of these verses on my Septuagint that I found interesting. Uh, verse 9, I heard you uh, read that it said, Yahuwah, your Elohim. Um, it says in verse 9 in the Septuagint, and Yahushua said to the children of Yashrael, come hither and hearken to the word of Yahuwah, our Elohim. Alright, so your versus our. No worries. Yes. Yeah. Sounds good, but good catch. I love that you're keeping your eyes out, Brother Doug. Keep doing it. I, I, I want to see what the differences are between our our scriptures and the Septuagint. So good stuff, brother. Um, other than that, this chapter is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I don't know if you want to go sold level and look at the three days, you know, symbolic as three days, you know, everything is oh. about three days, three nights, and the resurrection. Oh, also... Also, verse 4 is a little different, too. Um, okay, what does verse 4 you, say? You, you remember when you were talking about the 3,000 feet? Yeah. Or I, I forget the measurement. Um, yes, 3,000 feet. It says feet. in mind, but let there be a distance between you and it, 
you shall stand as much as 2,000 cubits from it. Yeah, so I don't so, know if cute. Let's see. I'm going to look it up right now because that's one thing I'm not good at is, <laughs> is converting cubits to feet. Mathematics. Um, you said how much was it? 2,000 what? 2,000 cubits. Just 2,000? That, that's what it's... Y yeah. I'm just doing Google. 2,000 cubits to feet. It's 3,000 feet, so we're right. So it's oh, the translation's okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're on board. So that's that's pretty far, right? I wonder how how much is a hundred yards to feet. I know it's three feet per per yard, right? How many? Yeah, let me let me see real quick. How many feet are in a yard? So I forget. And three hundred feet. A so a hundred yards, a football field is three hundred feet, right? So. Three well, football, football field fields 100. is 900 feet. So well, just add another 100, 100 feet to, to three fields. Three football fields and 100 feet would give you the distance that they were supposed to stay back from the Ark of the Covenant. That's pretty wild. That's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Well, actually, more than that, because a football field is only 100 Oh, my yards. goodness. Yeah, what am I thinking? That's, that's only 1,000. Yeah. That's only 1,000. Three... Yeah. three uh, so that's times 10. 10 football fields. Yeah. What the world? Wow. <laughs> Can you even see that far away? Uh, I don't know. It would be hard to follow. I, I wonder how they <laughs> followed the ark <laughs> from that far away. I, I don't know how you could see that. I wonder if they had uh, binoculars and telescopes back in those days. Somebody leading the charge saying, all right, they made a left. <laughs> I'm sure they had some type of... Object it is that something. Away. Anyways, that's us being transparent. All right, Miracles is up next. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, it's such a trip. It's about half a mile, <laughs> um, if we were to look at that. And I'm pretty sure they were able to see it because if they're calling all the Levites and the priests, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of people um, going before them. So I'm 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 pretty sure they were just to to see the. Um, yeah, we'll see where they're going. There's the hills, going. hills and valleys. <laughs> so there's such a distance. I mean, that's that's how uh uh, uh that that is a very interesting point that there needs to be that that much separation from from the art. Um. But uh, but yeah, good stuff. Around somebody um somebody step two thousand nine hundred ninety nine feet and get burned. <laughs> <laughs> just they just disappeared. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Stay behind the line. <laughs> All right, next chapter. Hallelujah. Uh, Yahusha chapter three. This was Yahusha chapter yeah, three. I said we were gonna take a break. Um Yeah, you know what? Let's take a break. Yahusha, that was Yahusha chapter three. Hallelujah. 